Am I wrong for throwing a cake at my best man's girlfriend's dress and telling them to leave my wedding? So three weeks ago, I, 28 male, married my wife, 27 female. The wedding was all planned out and ready as we had been planning it before the whole COVID situation happened and when we finally thought it was time to tie the knot. I asked my best friend Derek to be my best man along with his two kids, one boy and one girl, to be our flower girl and ring bearer. We adored the kids and we were their godparents so we obviously wanted to include them in some sort of way. They all agreed as long as the kid's mother, Derek's girlfriend, was allowed to come as a guest. My wife and I agreed and we gave her an invitation which included a dress code, aka don't wear white or anything that resembles a wedding dress. The day of the wedding came and Derek told me his girlfriend was going to be a bit late. I was fine with it because I wasn't close to her at all. In fact, she only agreed for us to be the godparents for her kids because they liked us so much. She then came in just before my wife was meant to be coming down, wearing a short white imitation wedding dress. When I asked Derek what the hell she was wearing, he told me that she wasn't wearing white. It was pearl, so this already infuriated me. When my wife began walking down the aisle, she noticed her and became visibly upset and then continued to put a smile on her face. Once we got to the reception and all of the kids were sent home, we all became a bit drunk. Derek then asked to do an announcement. At first, I thought he was going to talk about us or about my wife and I as it was our wedding. Instead, he was drunkenly mumbling about something along the lines of, thought it was a perfect time, then proceeded to propose to his girlfriend. My wife went to the bathroom as she was upset that they were taking the spotlight. I became angry and asked Derek and his girlfriend to leave the wedding and they refused. I got to the point where I had to calm my wife down just to be able to cut the cake. When we cut the cake, my drunk ass threw it at Derek's girlfriend's dress and ruined it. I did tell them I'll pay for the dry cleaning but to get the f*** out of my wedding, which they proceeded to do. Now, Derek and his girlfriend are calling me an asshole for ruining the dress, which I have paid for dry cleaning, along with embarrassing them at my own wedding. I managed to get in contact with her family and they all said that the dress had no value within the family. And my family continued to send me hate for not apologizing to them first and being the bigger person. So, am I the asshole for being drunk and stupid when they took away my wife's spotlight on her special day? I do know there was probably a better way to handle it, but I was drunk and just wanted to get back at them for ruining the love of my life's special day. So... Am I the asshole? Am I wrong for faking a work emergency to get out of a wedding? I, 28 female, have been with my boyfriend, 29 male, for about 8 months. Last weekend, two friends of his were getting married. He's from Scotland and we live south of England, and so I haven't met any of those friends yet. Originally, the wedding was in 2020. Obviously, COVID postponed it. And then, due to a death in the groom's family, it only happened last Saturday. When the original invite went out, my boyfriend was dating someone else for about 2 years and he RSVP'd for a plus 1. When the new date was decided, they didn't send new invites, just a text or email with the new date and time. When my boyfriend asked me to attend, I foolishly didn't think to ask if the bride knew I was coming because he assured me he had a plus one. On Friday, we got to the pre-wedding reception and when we got to the bride and groom, immediately I realized the issue. The bride is shocked my boyfriend has brought someone. When my boyfriend said he RSVP'd a plus one, the bride said yes, but that had been when you were dating the ex. We walk away and suddenly I can hear the bride panicking, saying, we don't have the seats or the food, and then she starts crying. I feel awful. She spends the next two hours crying in the corner, being consoled by her maid of honor that she didn't need extra stress. The groom said that it's fine, but it's obviously uncomfortable, so I faked a call and then came back and claimed a work emergency, said I had to leave ASAP. I apologized to the bride and groom who stopped crying enough to say it was lovely to meet me. I then got a taxi and a train home. When my boyfriend got back Monday, he asked me about the emergency and I explained I had lied so the bride didn't have to stress about me being there and he got livid. He called me an asshole and said that not only did I leave him on his own all weekend, but all of his friends thought I prioritized work over the wedding and that I made a horrible impression. I thought I was helping the situation by not being there and stressing out the wedding party. I said a work emergency because for a family emergency, my boyfriend would have felt obligated to come with me and I wanted him to stay and enjoy the wedding. So, am I the asshole? Am I wrong for inviting my fiancé's younger sister to our wedding? I, 25 female, am engaged to my fiancé, 32 male. We've been dating for four years before getting engaged last year. We've always gotten along well with each other's families and celebrated holidays together. Both of our families were happy when we announced our engagement. I recently found out that my fiancé actually has a 15-year-old younger sister, let's call her Anne, who I never met despite her living at her parents and me visiting often. When I asked about her during a family dinner, they glared at me and coldly said I shouldn't mention her and that I should just forget about her. The intense response kind of shocked me, so I dropped the subject. But I tried to talk about it with my fiancé after we got home. He brushed it off and said that Anne doesn't want to be a part of the family, so she's not allowed to join any family events or gatherings until she decides to talk to them. Maybe because I'm generally a curious person, but something just felt off. 
Even at my fiancé's parents' home, there are pictures of their children everywhere, but there's not a single picture of Anne. A few days ago, I contacted Anne, saying I'd love to get to know my future sister-in-law. We met up in a cafe, and she is such a sweet girl. But it turned out she's mute. She can hear, but just can't talk. Her parents got it into their heads that she's able to talk, but chooses not to, because there's no way a child of them would have a disability. So, they excluded Anne from the family until she talks. We talked. I talked, she wrote, I don't know sign language, and I feel really sorry for her. I invited her to my wedding, telling her that I'd love to see her there. When I later told this during a family dinner with my fiancé's family, they blew up, telling me how I dare to talk to Anne and to revoke my invitation because if Anne doesn't want to talk to them, she doesn't deserve to be a part of the family and shouldn't be allowed to join in family events. They told me I shouldn't stick my nose in their family business. My fiancé sided with his parents, telling me to just forget Anne exists and to apologize to his parents. This angered me because I thought my fiancé would have my back, and I yelled at them that I'm not going to uninvite her and that she deserves to be treated better. Since then, my fiancé has been constantly telling me that I'm behaving like a child throwing a tantrum and to apologize to his family for my behavior, but I just can't accept the way Anne is treated. It also made me worry if we end up having children, would my fiancé treat our child the same if they end up with a disability of some kind? Some of my friends are also saying that I should just let it go and not overreact so much. That every family does things their own way. So I should just apologize and do as they tell me to prevent my relationship from suffering. My friend won't let anyone in her house after 9.30. And I just found out why. They're the happiest couple that I've ever met. Like, if you didn't believe in love, this couple would make you believe in it. But one evening, it all came crashing down. I arrived at Jaycee's house at 5 p.m. sharp. She is obsessed with time. Always wondering why someone's a minute late or a minute early. As if she's a detective and you're in her interrogation room. But before I get into what happened, let me tell you a little bit about Jaycee. She's got pitch black hair, a nose ring, wears dark clothing. She's the type of girl that has pumpkins sitting out in the beginning of September. And she's super welcoming. Actually, the rug on her front door reads, leave now. So tonight I was going by her house because me and her had planned a movie night. But we had to start the movie night at five because she never lets anyone in her house after 9.30. As soon as I walked into her house, I immediately smelled cinnamon cookies. I was hoping they were for me, well, for us. But JC just brought in a big bowl of popcorn and some drinks, which was fine. I certainly wasn't gonna complain and lose her trust for the next two decades. Then the movie ended. We thought Halloween 2 was okay. While JC went upstairs to find another movie, I decided to give myself a tour of the house. And here's when things started to go wrong. I was just glad she was willing to watch another movie and that she was letting her friends back into her life. She hadn't really been social since her and Tyler broke up. No one knows what happened between them, just that they were together one day and then the next day they weren't. After the breakup, no one heard from Tyler again. Then we started the second movie, Saw 4. She fell asleep during the movie and the next time I checked my phone, it was 9.15. I thought I better get going soon, even though she probably wasn't gonna wake up in the next 15 minutes. I headed over to the kitchen to grab a glass of water before leaving. And then I saw those cinnamon cookies on the counter and I was like, she's not gonna miss one, right? After finishing the cookie, I turned on the water on the sink to wash my hands, but I was trying to be like really quiet because I didn't wanna wake her up. The water didn't wake her up, but my scream did. My friend won't let anyone in her house after 9.30 part two. Last thing I told you is JC awoke to my scream. I saw the face of a man outside of the kitchen window. She ran to the kitchen and I told her to call the cops. What did he look like? She asked me, but I didn't know. He was definitely a man. I think he was white. She burst out in laughter and said, that's enough scary movies for tonight. But I was refusing to leave because I had just seen a man. I knew I saw a man out the window. Then I saw the same man through the living room window, except JC. JC saw it too. She ran to the front door and I thought she was making sure it was locked, but no, she was making sure I didn't look through the peephole. I ran up to her and yelled, move, we need to be able to identify this guy for the police. Confusion hit me. Why won't you move? She broke down and started crying. At this point, I could tell that she had basically given up. She was hiding something. She said, you know that old woman that me and Tyler visited? Now, let me just preface this. Tyler and JC were about as open-minded as people come. They tried basically every religion and they were meeting up with this woman because she claimed to have some certain abilities. While she was telling me this, the man was still banging against the door. But as open-minded as they were, she told me that when she met up with the old woman, they couldn't help but laugh at her claiming to be one of the last real witches in the world. I tried to look around Jackie to see what was going on outside and that's when I saw it. This was the stuff of nightmares. The man was on all fours and had pitch black eyes. And when he opened his mouth, he had cat-like teeth. She got up and ran to the kitchen and grabbed the tray of cinnamon cookies. I'm like, what are you doing? 
why are you not freaking out? Then she walked outside and, and started giving this half man, half creature these cinnamon cookies. And that's when I realized Tyler always did love cookies. Am I in the wrong for dropping my friends for revealing my husband's infidelity? I, 44 female, have known for years that my husband, 49 male, cheats on me. I grew up with a single mother who worked night shift at a motel. I made it my goal to give my kids a better life. Age 18, I married my high school sweetheart. We both got jobs, him at a manufacturing company and me at a department store. Things went well until year seven of our marriage when the company that my ex worked for closed. He fell into a deep depression and ended up having a one night stand with a girl in another city where he was interviewing for a job. He confessed when he came home and he said that he was depressed because the job interview was bad and he was upset from the fighting and us not sleeping in the same bed. I was furious and immediately kicked him out. Here's where my friend Marie comes in. Marie was a maid of honor at the wedding. When I told her why I had kicked my ex out, she was sympathetic. However, after I told Marie that my husband wanted to talk about how he's been working on himself ever since he cheated, Marie seemed sympathetic to the cheater and said maybe I should hear him out as a courtesy. However, I declined and divorced him. A year later, I started dating my now husband. His business started making in a lot of profits as soon as we met. After we married, I kept my friendship to Marie even though she wasn't part of the Santa Barbara scene. My husband retired my mom after we got married. He also funded my boutique business. However, he's someone who gets bored easily. At first, when I caught him cheating, he apologized. However, this one time we fought about his cheating, he threatened divorce. After that, he and I suddenly came to an agreement that his affairs better be discreet. It was never openly discussed and he knows that I'd prefer he be faithful, especially since we have an active sex life. However, I prefer this over divorcing, ruining my daughter's life, and dealing with a prenup that his lawyers crafted that protects his future earnings as well. Yes, that is legal. In my circle of friends, many women deal with this. They subtly provide me with emotional support. However, Marie works in the hotel industry and became aware of my husband's cheating. When she tried to suddenly allude to the possibility, I brushed her off. However, last week when we were together with another friend of mine who lived in SB, Marie brought up that my husband was cheating and who with. I tried to get her to stop, but she fired up and started listing all the ways that my husband was a cheater. I was furious and didn't know why she didn't let it go. After our other friend left, I got into a fight with Marie about how she tried to get me to work it out with my ex and she said that my current husband was far worse. The way she kept telling me how my husband was horrible rubbed salt in the wound that she opened. I finally told her that we had an arrangement and that I didn't want her around anymore. She tried calling me, but I decided that I didn't want to continue this friendship. So, am I in the wrong? Am I wrong for cutting contact with my friend for wanting to hook up with my daughter? I'm 47 female and my friend 40 female and her husband 48 male are known to be swingers, although they never confirm nor deny. I met this friend, I'll call her Sarah, at my workplace seven years ago. She was my coworker. I worked at that job for many years. All my coworkers were like family to me. We were all very close. So even when I stopped working there, I kept close contact with my ex-coworkers and we would hang out often. My daughter-in-law's 26 baby shower was a couple days ago and it took place at my house. So I invited many of my friends, including Sarah and her husband. The baby shower was going great until my daughter, 19, came up to me saying that she thinks Sarah and her husband are hitting on her. I asked her why she felt that way, hoping it would be some sort of misunderstanding. But my daughter said that Sarah kept talking about my daughter and her boyfriend's 20, I'll call him Dan, looks, saying how attractive they are, complimenting their bodies, and asking about their sex life. My daughter said her boyfriend looked visibly uncomfortable. Sarah then offered my daughter and her boyfriend to come to her place with her husband when the party was over. My daughter just awkwardly lasted off and then went to tell me what happened. While she was telling me, Sarah's husband, I'll call him Jay, was talking to Dan. The conversation started off about sports, then somehow became about sex. Jay asked Dan straight up if him and my daughter wanted to go back to his place and swap out ladies for a bit. Dan immediately declined, to which Jay replied, you're no fun, and kept trying to convince him. Dan walked away after that. I didn't want to start drama at the baby shower, so the next morning I confronted Sarah over the phone about what happened. I don't see what the problem is. They're both adults. That response made me livid, but I was trying with all my might to keep cool. These were my issues. One, why would you try to plan a hookup at a baby shower? Two, why would you hook up with your close friend's daughter and her partner? Three, Sarah and her husband have known my daughter since she was 12. Sarah refused to apologize and accused me of kink shaming. I said some not so nice things on the phone and I did threaten to beat her ass if she ever comes close to my daughter or her boyfriend again. I told her to never speak to me again and blocked her number. Some of our mutual friends say that I overreacted because it's not like she was trying to force your daughter to have sex with her and her husband, and they said they were just asking my daughter and her boyfriend if they were interested, so that makes it okay. I wonder how they would feel if she did that to their children. So, am I in the wrong?